From the studio at Meisner Park in Boca Raton, welcome to the Teacher of the Year Awards, brought to you by the Rotary Club of Boca Raton Sunrise. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 38th annual Boca Raton Teacher of the Year Awards, brought to you by the Rotary Club of Boca Raton, Sunrise, and the Golden Bell Education Foundation. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate 23 outstanding teachers who truly know what it means to educate, affirm, and inspire our students. I'm Rachel Capitano, South Region Superintendent for the School District of Palm Beach County. Each of the teachers here being recognized this evening could have taken their talents anywhere. But I'm quite certain that we can all agree on how thankful we are that they chose Team Palm Beach, especially the South Region. Let's give our teachers a round of applause. I now invite you to stand and remain at attention for the presentation of the colors by the Olympic Heights Marine Corps JROTC Color Guard, commanded by Cadet Sergeant Major Victoria Rivaldo. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you to our students for that outstanding official start to our ceremony. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, while our real VIPs are seated in the first row this evening, I would like to introduce the elected officials who are in the audience this evening. School Board Member, Mr. Frank Barbieri. <laughs> State Senator, Lori Berman. <laughs> Deputy Mayor of Boca Raton, Yvette Drucker. Boca Raton City Council, Fran Knockless. <laughs> Boca Raton City Council member, Andy Thompson. <laughs> and finally, Boca Raton City Council member, Mark Wigder. Next, I would like to recognize district officials who are in the audience this evening. Superintendent Mike Burke. <laughs> J. 
General Counsel Mrs. Sean Bernard. <laughs> Inspector General Ms. Teresa Michael. <laughs> Deputy Superintendent of Schools Mr. Ed Tierney. <laughs> Chief of Staff Mrs. Jamie Wyatt. Chief of Equity and Wellness, Mr. Keith Oswald. <laughs> Chief of Communications, Mr. Sean Cooley. <laughs> Instructional Superintendent for the South Region, Dr. Anthony Lockhart. <laughs> Instructional Superintendent for the South Region, Mrs. Alicia Steiger. And finally, CTA President Gordon Longhofer. At this time, I would like to acknowledge our VIPs in the audience this evening. President and CEO for the Boca Chamber, Mr. Troy McClellan. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chair Chairman of the Golden Bell Education Foundation, Mr. Chuck Stout. <laughs> Education Foundation President and CEO, Mr. James Gavarillos. <laughs> Senior Strategic Account Executive for United Healthcare, Mr. Jim Moore. Co-founder and Chief Program Officer of Best Foot Forward, Mrs. Debbie Ellman. <laughs> Co-founder and Chief Executive Officer of Best Foot Forward, Mrs. Donna Biazzi. <laughs> and finally, I would like to announce our school leaders who have joined us this evening. A.D. Henderson University and FAU High School Superintendent Joel Herbst. Addison Meisner School, Mrs. Nancy Holly. Blue Lake Elementary School, Mr. Seth Moldovan. Boca Raton Elementary School, Mrs. Renee Elf. Boca Raton High School, Dr. Susie King. Boca Raton Middle School, Mrs. Lisa Lee. Calusa Elementary School, Mrs. Susan Figarillo. Coral Sunset Elementary School, Assistant Principal, Mrs. Jennifer Espinoza. Del Prado Elementary School, Dr. Lori Ryapel. <laughs> Don Estridge High Tech Middle School, Dr. Joshua Davidow. <laughs> Eagles Landing Middle School, Mr. Dominic Rosati. <laughs> Hammock Point Elementary School, Ms. Stephanie Cook. J.C. Mitchell Elementary School, Dr. Joan Pierre Jerome. <laughs> Loggers Run Middle School, Dr. Krista Rogers. <laughs> Olympic Heights High School, Mrs. Kelly Millsberg. <laughs> Omni Middle School, Dr. Nakia Deleuz. Sandpiper Shores Elementary School, Mrs. Monique Coyle. <laughs> Spanish River High School, Dr. Allison Castellano. <laughs> Sunrise Park Elementary School, Mrs. Kristen Minchel. 
Verde K-8 School, Mrs. Lyndon Codling. Water's Edge Elementary School, Assistant Principal, Mrs. Dawn Sarnelli. West Boca High School, Mr. Edmund Capitano. <laughs> and finally, Whispering Pines Elementary School, ESC Coordinator, Mrs. Shauna Kingsley Scott. Thank you to all of our dedicated elective officials, district officials, VIPs, and school leaders for joining us this evening as we celebrate the Teacher of the Year Awards. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Tim Sharp, a longtime Rotarian, past president, and event co-chair of this 38th annual Teacher of the Year Awards founded by the Rotary Club of Boca Raton Sunrise. Thank you, Rachel. As Rachel mentioned, this is the 38th year the Rotary Club of Boca Raton Sunrise has recognized and honored our outstanding educators from our Boca Raton public schools. This year, we are again thankful to have the Golden Bell Education Foundation partnering with us. Approximately 38 years ago, Boca, Boca Sunrise Rotarian and current Palm Beach County board member, Mr. Frank Barbieri, started this program with just four schools. Spanish River High School, Loggers Run Middle School, Sandpiper Shores, and Whispering Pines Elementaries, and have since grown to the 23 schools we are now recognizing. I'm so excited each year to be part of this awesome experience tonight, honoring the best of the best teachers from our local elementary, middle, and high schools. Now I'd like to extend some thank yous to those who made this event happen this evening. First, to the studio of Meister Park for hosting us this, to this beautiful venue and the staff who helped to help set up. Next, I would like to thank our many sponsors who without their support, we would not be able to have this event. So a few of our sponsors have joined us tonight. When I call your name, please stand so we can recognize you. I think we already heard from Donna and Debbie Elman from Best Foot Forward. Where are they? Okay, all right. And we also have Roberta uh, Kelgard from the Boca Raton Museum. We have Kalinda Dolman from Gu Guaranteed Rate. We have Amy Gottlieb, Aisha O'Neill, and Diamond Stevens from the Hanley Foundation. We have Matt Mahoney, Jason Martin, both from Moss and Associates. We have Stephen and Laura Feldman from PC Professor. We have Don and Pat Dresbach from the Beacon Group. And we have Mr. Jim Moore from United Healthcare. Thank you all for so much support for this wonderful event. Just so everyone knows, the proceeds for this event not only fund this event, but also provide college scholarships to teachers from our Rotary Club and the teacher classroom grant, grants from the Golden Bell Education Foundation. So that's where that money is going for after tonight's event. The committee members who helped me put this together program tonight include several other Boca Raton Sunrise Rotarians, uh, Ms. Christina Doctor with the Palm Beach County School District, Ms. Rachel Capitano, also from the district and serving as our MC tonight. This fabulous production tonight was done by the Education Network of Palm Beach County. And this is a beautiful production you'll see uh, as we go along tonight. And also, we, I want to have a special shout out to my co-chair, Ms. Mandy Forrester, who is the manager of the Golden Bell Education Foundation, who I mentioned before are partnering with us with this Teacher of the Year event. Let's have a nice hand for our committee members. We also have the privilege of our four Boca Raton high schools participating in this prestigious event. You just saw the Olympic Heights Marine Junior ROTC Color Guard commanded by Cadet Sergeant Major Victoria Robaleo. Where are they? Over here? Let's have a big hand for them. All right, thank you so much. I understand they're, um, they're gonna be competing in a national competition in Pennsylvania coming up soon. 
Oh, congratulations. Good luck with that. All right. Also, you heard the exciting sounds from the Spanish River Silver Sound Jazz Band under the direction of Mr. Craig White. And all the food, including the appetizers and later the desserts, have been prepared by the West Boca Culinary Academy, led by Chef Michael Agnardo. <laughs> the food was fantastic, wasn't it? Really was good, really good. Thank you so much, guys, fantastic. And finally, after the show, you'll be hearing from the Boca Raton Choral Group, led by Miss Caitlin Wallace, during the desserts and coffee. So look forward to that. So let's give another round of applause for our four high schools. Thank you so much for being here tonight. So it now gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Troy McClellan, CEO and Executive Director of the Boca Raton Chamber of Commerce, who will tell you a little bit about the Golden Bell Education Foundation. Oh. That's electric right there. Thanks, Tim. Uh, good evening, everyone. And Tim, great job, as always, uh, with this event tonight. There was such energy and a vibe, right, out there in the lobby earlier. It's, it's wicked cool to, to see it and be here at this event. Uh, we love it. And so it's an honor and a pleasure for us, uh, the Golden Bell Education Foundation and Chairman Stout over here, who you met, uh, to once again partner with the uh, Boca um, uh, Rotary Club Sunrise for this, the 38th year. Uh, of the uh, annual Boca Raton Teacher of the Year Award celebration. Uh, and we are extremely grateful, obviously, for the devotion and the commitment uh, that you have uh, to our kids and making sure uh, that they move along in, in school properly to be good employees for our businesses when they're done. So again, the quick little background, the Boca Chamber created Golden Bell Education Foundation in 1991 in an effort just to try to make sure our public schools were the best that they could be, had all the resources that they need, uh, and make sure that, that our future leaders had the best education experience possible. And so Golden Bell is a 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization that provides the necessary gap funding to our Boca Raton public schools and the teachers through an annual grant program. And teachers, thank you for getting your grant request into us on time this year. We appreciate that. It's easier for us to give you money. The foundation has granted nearly $2 million since its inception, has, impact, it has impacted close to a million students in over 1,100 classrooms through more than 1,200 grants in grades K through 12. And under the leadership of Chairman Chuck Stout, we look forward to increasing, increasing those numbers in the future. We are extremely proud of one of our most recent initiatives in partnership with the Education Foundation of Palm Beach County, thank you, Jimmy G, by providing all 13 Boca Raton elementary schools with the Spire Reading Intervention Program. Golden Bell's goal is to ensure that every student in Boca Raton is reading at grade level before they enter the fourth grade. Shout out to Big Cheese Chief of Staff, Jamie Wyatt, for her Wicked incredible help uh, to move this project along, and of course, Superintendent Burke uh, for your support as well. In addition, for the last 15 years, Golden Bell also delivers an entrepreneurial program called the Young Entrepreneurs Academy to students in grades six to 12, teaching them those critical uh, thinking skills and presentation skills needed for a successful business career. But tonight, there are 23 teachers who are recognized as best in class. Come on, come on. Thank you, Jeez. I know it's late, you've been in school all day, but anyway, by their peers. And uh, we're also wicked proud to be able to celebrate you tonight. So congratulations and thank you for all that you do uh, to help our Boca Raton students thrive. So now it's my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce a dear friend to me, to you, to Golden Bell, to the school district, and to anybody that knows the guy, Frank Barbieri, or as I call him, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Although Frank needs no introduction, but will receive one later in the program, he is our District 5 uh, Boca Raton School Board member who has been serving in our district for 16 years, and half of those years he served as Chairman of the Board. I just want to take this opportunity quickly to say how fortunate 
we have been to have this man serve our district, represent our schools, and advocate on behalf of the students. Frank is a once in a generation type of leader who possesses tireless energy, you all agree with that, and complete focus on the mission of the school district. Definitely a legacy leader, I like to say. If you didn't know, the Boca Chamber also operates a political action committee called Business Leaders United. We endorsed Frank 16 years ago when he first ran for that seat. Smart move. And we've supported him wholeheartedly uh, every step of the way since. And we all know he's not running again. Um, so it's a special, special night and special time for him. And this won't surprise you that he cut short a family trip uh, when he was in Akron, Ohio, to come back to Boca to interview with the PAC for that endorsement. We knew right then how serious he was about wanting to serve the school district and advocate for the students, teachers, and administrators. His character shined through. So it's no surprise that Frank Barbieri, Barbieri will receive one of the highest accolades, lifetime achievement. And although he only served 16 years on the school board, in that environment, it's like a lifetime. Just look at the color of his hair. Or better yet, ask Rita. I'm also proud to announce that Frank has joined the board of directors of the Golden Bell Education Foundation. So he will continue to serve you, the teachers, and the students for many years to come. And Rita, don't worry, our board is nothing like the school board. So Frank, Thank you, and congratulations on your well-deserved honor later this evening. Please help me welcome to this podium, Mr. Chairman Frank Barbieri. Well, there was a... Uh, honor. Thank you. Um, thank you, Troy. Um, I'm only up here to introduce our wonderful superintendent, so... I appreciate all that, Troy, but, th but, but thank you. Um, I have the honor of introducing our superintendent, and uh, when Mr. Burke was hired by the board to serve as our superintendent three years ago in 2021, I was chairman of the board and was asked to introduce him at the welcoming event sponsored by the Education Foundation of Palm Beach County shortly after he began leading the district as our superintendent. I'd like to read you the introduction I gave at that event in 2021 with a couple of slight modifications to take into account the passage of time since then. Here's what I said. Mr. Burke first joined the district in 1998 and has served as budget director, chief operating officer, chief negotiator, and chief financial officer, making him the longest serving administrator on the district's executive cabinet. While his tenure, tenure here spans decades, Mr. Burke's unanimous appointment by the board was not seen as a rite of passage. It was an intentional decision by all seven of us. We know without question that we have the most qualified, best intentioned, and most capable person for this challenging job. The press asked me back then in several interviews, why Mr. Burke? Why no national search? And my answer was a question, what's the point? Where would we have found anywhere in this country a person with every necessary ingredient to lead the school district of Palm Beach County as superintendent. We certainly can all agree that the 10th largest district in the United States with 23,000 employees and a $5.2 billion budget is served well by a superintendent with the financial and business acumen of Superintendent Burke. But some people would ask, what about an academic background? It's true Mr. Burke does not have an education degree, but as Chief Financial Officer Burke, for the past 15 years back then, Superintendent Burke was an invaluable and influential member of the district's academic team. After all, before a dollar was spent by the academic team, the expenditure first had to pass muster with CFO Burke. And we all know that with Mr. Burke's pension for making sure a very large budget, budget is balanced and every dollar spent prudently, he had to be convinced that a dollar spent on academics was a dollar well spent. You don't work that many years shoulder to shoulder with the academic team making those decisions without gaining an in-depth understanding of the educational needs of the tens of thousands of children that this district serves yearly. After my service on the school board for well over a decade and seeing the transition between six superintendents, it struck me and I believe it was immediately recognized by the district's employees, our parents, the business community, and all other stakeholders how seamless this transition occurred. 
There wasn't even a blip on the radar screen. Superintendent Burke was just there on the next day, sitting in the superintendent's office, doing the job required of him as if he'd been there for years. I concluded that introduction by saying, on behalf of the entire board, thank you, Superintendent Burke, for all that you have accomplished already, and we look forward to seeing where you will lead this great district in the years to come. That was three years ago. That was the first time I got to I concluded that introduction by saying, on behalf of the entire board, thank you, Super Superintendent Burke. Now three years later, and after serving as your school board member for just shy of 16 years, I have witnessed firsthand Mr. Burke's outstanding ability to lead this district. Mr. Burke has made my colleagues and me, and I trust all in attendance here tonight, <clears throat> proud that he's our superintendent. In, si in hindsight, there is no doubt in my mind that one of the very best decisions that the school board made out of the thousands of decisions made during the 16 years I have served is hiring Mr. Burke as our superintendent. I stand by what I said in 2021, and it's been proven true over the past three years. Where would we have found anywhere in this country a person with every necessary ingredient to lead the school district of Palm Beach County as superintendent? Please join me in welcoming my friend, Superintendent Michael Burke. Thank you, Mr. Barbieri. I really appreciate those kind remarks. And uh, welcome, everybody. Appreciate you coming out here to support us. Uh, I don't know about you, but does anybody feel like this school year is moving by really fast? <laughs> yeah, like, I can't believe we're in April. But this is one of my favorite events, and this, this really kicks off the season of celebration where we have this great event with our Boca Teachers of the Year. Uh, we have scholarship award dinners going on. And in a few weeks, we will start our commencement ceremonies where we'll graduate nearly 13,000 of our seniors from our district-operated schools. And you all in this room, the teachers, that's really the end product of all your efforts and labor and dedication. And it's really a proud moment when we see these graduates cross, cross the stage, get their diploma, and they're heading off to great places. Ivy League schools, you know, the armed services, military academies, they're loading up the University of Florida, Florida State, all of our Florida schools. And uh, it's just an exciting time of year. I, I would like to take a minute also just to recognize Mr. Frank Barbieri. You know, I've had the pleasure of working with him, and Mr. Barbary has always been a strong voice for students, teachers, and parents. And when I say strong voice, I mean that both figuratively and literally. <laughs> and as chairman of our school board through, I think, the most difficult years imaginable through the pandemic, we needed Mr. Barbary's strong voice. You know, he was a voice of reason, it was a uh, strength, and diplomacy, and he really guided our district through some really challenging times that allowed us to really maintain stability. And you know, and his colleagues on the board support as well. It takes the whole team, uh, but he really led this district through some tough times, and he did it with class, dignity, and grace, and an unwavering commitment for our schools and our students and our teachers and our employees. Uh, I don't know how Mr. Barbieri, on top of everything he does with the school board. Uh, is a successful attorney and he finds time to really just donate his energy and resources and wisdom on a variety of fronts. He serves on several boards from Best Foot Forward where he was a founding board member. Uh, he's, he's received the Champion of Children Award from the Best Foot Forward. He's being recognized again along with Rita Barberry this weekend for a well-deserved, they're the uh, co-chairs and they're being honored on Saturday evening. And he's been on advisory boards for Loggers Run Middle School, Sandpiper Shores Elementary, served on the Board of Trustees for the George Snow Scholarship, uh, West Boca Community Council, and the Boca Raton Chamber of Commerce. So he's a busy guy. Uh, I was just thinking about some of our, you know, he's, the 16 years of being on the board, and mo most of that time as board chair, he's been an invaluable thought partner for me as becoming a new superintendent, now in my third year. But he truly is a friend and guides me through some tough decisions, and I always appreciate him putting the time and, you know, share his valuable insights and do everything he can to support the district. You know, when I was CFO and uh, years ago, early into Mr. Barbieri's tenure on the board, in the school district, you, my principal friends will know this, you know, if you don't spend your budget by June 30th, actually earlier, by the end of May really, uh, we kind of cut off purchasing and the school district likes to sweep up those dollars into fund balance and it gives us a little savings going into the next year. So Mr. Barbieri as a board member has a a modest supply budget, and we had just passed the spending deadline for the fiscal year, 
and uh, he kind of came to a realization. He's like, look, I had this money. I, I'm not traveling. I'm not doing anything. I want to do something good with this money to support my schools. And I said, well, Mr. Barber, you know, it's, hey, it's too late. You missed a deadline. <laughs> and uh, that answer did not fly. He said, are you telling me I can't use this money, you know, do something good? We've got kids that need supplies. We need more books in our schools. And I said, you know, you put it like that, it's a good point. Let's, let's see what we can do. And uh, we were able to work through that, and it had a big impact. You know, uh, Mr. McClellan talked about gap funding. You know, we, we do our best to get the resources into our schools, and we do a pretty good job with that. And we have a lot of competing priorities, and mainly we want to make sure we're paying our employees the best we can. And Florida doesn't necessarily make it easy. Florida's 47th in the country in terms of funding. So these little things that we can do and get help from our business partners and community go a long way. And just like those supplies that Mr. Barberi made sure he got into the hands of students that needed them, uh, it just showed his commitment. And that I've seen that just shine through over and over. Uh, when it comes to bargaining, and it's time to figure out, you know, we want, always want to give the best raise we can. As a finance guy, you're kind of saying, look, let's, you know, don't push it too far. Let's kind of keep a little in the tank. And I can tell you he was such a strong advocate for our employees and our teachers that he always pushed me just to that point where he knew <laughs> it was safe to give the raise and we would be, remain solvent, but making sure that we had worked as hard as possible to put dollars into our employees' hands. So I'm really going to miss having him on the school board. I know he'll still be around and supporting us in a variety of ways, and I'm really happy for him that he'll get to enjoy some more time with Rita and they'll get to travel and do all those great things. But it's, it's going to be a whole different era without him here. And I, it's hard to imagine Boca in our schools without Mr. Barbieri. You know, he's you principals, you know, and teachers. He's out and about. He's, he's adopted all of you. And so anyway, just thank you, Mr. Barbieri. And I know we'll, we'll still be seeing each other, and you'll still be supporting us every way you can. Uh, tonight, you know, it's about our teachers. And this is a, a proud, proud group of teachers. I've had the pleasure of attending this event for the last few years, and I always like reading the program. And I tell you, when you read the Teachers of the Year from the Boca Raton schools, it's like a who's who's list. I mean, I recognize the names because they were, they've moved on to you know, being principals and other leadership roles or just being the top in their profession. So this Teacher of the Year Award, you should be incredibly proud of yourself. You're, the competition is fierce down here. You know, Boca does their part to really lift the district in our grades and all that with all the A schools in Boca. And I know that doesn't happen by chance, that you guys are working incredibly hard. And the focus of both the principals and the teachers and everyone working together along with the regional office and Ms. Capitano and Ms. Steiger and her team, uh, it's, you do amazing work. And as a result, we had the best situation possible in Boca where we have families that are beating down the door to get into their public schools. And that's, that's my mission. We say we're your best choice, and you guys are helping us live up to that every day. Uh, I want to thank the Rotary Club, the Golden Bell, our business partners that we recognized earlier, and community members. The other great thing about Boca is, you know, this is, we don't do this really in every, there's 39 municipalities, and some are more supportive of schools than others. I don't think anyone's as organized as this, where they've had these programs and this type of event to put on for our teachers of the year. So, that is what makes it really work and come all together when we can get the community, our schools, everybody coming up to the plate and pitching in their piece to provide a world-class education for our kids. So on behalf of the entire school district and school board, thank you and uh, appreciate your attention and let's enjoy the festivities. Thank you. Let's hear it again for our superintendent, Mike Burke. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to celebrate our 23 outstanding teachers? <laughs> teachers, when your name is called, please come up to the stage to receive your award from Mr. Frank Barbieri, along with a check for $200 from the Rotary Club of Boca Raton Sunrise, a letter from Mayor Scott Singer, and the following awards of a gift bag courtesy of the Rotary Club, our sponsors, the Boca Raton Museum, and the Education Foundation. Also, teachers, please stop to have your picture taken with Mr. Frank Barbieri. And now, I would like to invite up Jim Moore, Senior Strategic Account Executive for United Healthcare, and Troy McClellan, 
president and CEO of the Boca Chamber to announce the names of our 23 outstanding teachers. Teachers, congratulations again. All right. Troy, you ready for this? This is uh, why everybody's here, Jim. It's going to be wicked, It's, man. it's, it's going to be, be wicked. Wicked fun. The videos are wicked awesome. The gift bags are wicked. Look at the hardware over here. Yes, yes. Well, again, teachers, you guys are amazing. Or I should really say you gals. Uh, but again, Josh and Brett, you know, good job there. Um, yeah, it's a little unbalanced, I think, there, Jim. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I live with mostly women in my house, so I'm used to it. You guys are strong and powerful. So starting off tonight, <laughs> A.D. Henderson University School and FAU High School. Any owls in the house? Kristen Potter Olive. Come on up. You can still use the same speaking skills, right? I'm very proud of being a teacher. Middle school is my favorite group to work with. They do not have a shortage of opinions or ideas or energy. You just have to learn how to channel that. Hi, I'm Kristen Potter Oliveri, and I teach eighth grade English language arts and speech and debate at AD Henderson and FAU High School. My favorite part about teaching is that there's never a dull moment and I definitely do feel inspired by my students every day. I have hope for the future, I have hope for the world that my children are going to grow up in. I think that I can be demanding at times, but I think that I try to keep it down to earth and I use lots of humor. She's created our speech and debate program and what she's been able to do in the last 24 months has been significant. How teenagers get an obsession with TikTok and how it affects their mental health. It is really important to understand how to speak well, how to listen well, how to think quick on your feet. So these are skills that can help students going into any job. I feel confident that I'm giving them the skill set necessary to go out into the world and make it a better place. Nice. Congratulations, Kristen. Jim, both my kids went to, F went to Henderson and FAU. How, how come I didn't have that on my list? I don't know. Oh. And by the way, we'll when my to kids talk went to, to Rachel school, on that the one. classrooms didn't look quite like that when my kids were there, the, the old buildings. Anyway, Kristen, congratulations. Well done. All right, next up, from Addison Meisner, Deborah Tower. Line up the decimals when you're adding or subtracting. From the youngest days, I can remember pretending I was a teacher and playing with my dolls, and I never wanted to do anything else. My name is Deborah Tower. I teach middle grades mathematics at Addison Meisner School. When you walk into her room, you know you're somewhere special. She gives everything she needs for the kids to be successful. There's really no opportunity not to do well in her class because of all the support that she provides. We do a lot of things to make that fun. I have riddles that we do every day that we solve. The students earn math dollars. They love the incentive program. I have a store that they get to shop in once a month. We just kind of have a good time every single day. Good job. We're running out of bills. It's extra special, truthfully, because um, it's your administration has selected you, and it was just a great honor. Congratulations, Deborah. All right, um, something about this next person. I, I, I think th I'm thinking the word parallelogram for some reason. Uh, from Blue Lake Elementary, let's hear it for Laureen Potts. What is our formula when we're trying to find the area of the parallelogram? I did not like school. And I guess I just decided one day I wanted to make it different. I wanted to try to do what I could to make sure that other kids didn't feel the way that I felt going to school. Hi, my name is Laureen Potts. I teach fifth grade math and science at Blue Lake Elementary. Okay, so what's going to be the base of this one? My favorite part of the day, honestly, is them. They are the reason that I come here every day. They, I can't wait to see them every day when I leave at night. The first thing I'm doing is thinking, what are we going to do tomorrow? Mrs. Potts knows how to build relationships with our students. She really shows that she cares about them, she's genuine, and she really earns their trust throughout the entire school year. 
If they learn to be a good person, they're considerate of others, they're thinking about the big picture and what the difference they can make in life, all the other stuff falls into place. And so I hope that that's an impact I can make with them. This job's taking a lot out of Lorene, man. Jeez. Congratulations, Lorene. Yep. She's just rolling with it. Lorene probably doesn't remember, but when, when the school was open, the chamber and Golden Bell went there a couple times, and I went into her class. And as a Patriot fan, I saw this giant stuff. And I really wanted to like Lorene. But then I saw the giant stuff. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know. I don't think we can be friends. Just kidding. Congratulations. All right. Next up, from Boca Raton Elementary, right down the street from the chamber, the principal elf, is Danielle Hazard. Has the shortest orbit. What else? It's the closest to the sun. Just learning their personalities, learning what helps them, what doesn't help them. And I feel like this is such a diverse population that there are so many of those characteristics that are very important to figuring out how I should teach them. My name is Danielle Hazard. I teach fifth grade math and science at Boca Raton Elementary School. She has this amazing ability to make math and science fun. So all the students um, want to be in her classroom. She builds amazing relationships with the students. She works well with her colleagues. She is a principal's dream teacher. Making an impact on a student's life. Knowing that I've reached them in some way to better them for their future. Fantastic. All these math teachers. I was going to say, my first one of these that I got to come to was the 27th. So, in fact, I was in the back of the room at that time, way back there. Well, it was with uh, Superintendent Burke. So, uh, we both come a long way. Uh, with that, any Bobcats in the house here? There we go. All right. Boca Raton High. Let's hear it for Kelly Schroeder. Fun day, second year students, we'll start with you guys after our quote of the day. My inspiration was my mentor, Dr. Leslie Summer. She allowed me to come into her business classroom when I was in my former career as a bank manager. And through that, I discovered a passion for inspiring young adults. Hi, I'm Kelly Schroeder. I'm an ACE business and ACE accounting teacher here at Boca Raton Community High School. Kelly Schroeder is just an outstanding educator. You can tell by every single thing she does that she has the best interest of her students at the forefront of her mind at all times. Explain to me with details that you know the concept. My favorite part is when I see the, the wheels spinning and and they really understand the concept and through their answer I see their understanding and excitement towards the topic that we're talking about. There it is. I'm pretty sure just watching that video I probably would not have done well in that class. It looks pretty heavy. Congratulations Kelly. Kelly. Rounding out our Boca Raton schools here uh, the next recipient is Cynthia Patillo. Come on up, Cynthia. Right, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. The oh. two lab pages go on pages 37 and 38 in your notebook. I really think I was inspired by the teachers that I had. Having awesome teachers myself growing up, I guess I maybe wanted to pay it forward a little. My name is Cynthia Patillo. I am a sixth grade honors science teacher at Boca Raton Community Middle School. She's someone who truly cares about all the extras that the students should get to make them well-rounded. She wants them not only to get a hands-on science education, but she wants them to have fun. Let's see how it goes. Teaching doesn't come with a natural incentive program. When you're done with everything, you study for tomorrow's test. It's just nice to be recognized and to have someone tell you what they, what they see in you and what they think you're doing well, just like you would do for your own students.
There we go. Let's make some noise for Cynthia there. Congrats. And, and Troy, I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a flamingo dancer. Did you know? Oh, that? I didn't know. No, you didn't know. That. Well, no, not really. But uh, I know there's some flamingos in the house. Calusa Elementary. <laughs> Sonia Cher, come on down. Surround yourself around positive people. That's then positive. You're right. I love working with children. I love watching them grow and learn. I love to see them know that they can do big things, and I like being part of that. My name is Sonia Shear, and I teach fifth grade ELA at Clusa Elementary. There's a lot of things I can say about Ms. Shear. I can say she's a fantastic educator. I could say she's a master of her craft. I could say she creates a positive culture and climate in her classroom. But what I think I could say the most about Ms. Shear is that she cares. We build relationships here and friendships here, and if this is like our home, then I feel like we're able to take those risks and trust each other. So I think that's really important. Congratulations, Ms. Shear. Thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations, Sonia. Well done. All right, one of the coolest school names that we have in Boca Raton, it's just so soothing, makes you want to learn more, is Coral Sunset Elementary, right? Doesn't that just make you feel good about coming to school? No, not really getting a lot of love, not getting a lot of love from the teachers. Well, from Coral Sunset Elementary, we have Jennifer Weber. Which of the following numbers is a multiple of nine? My favorite part of the day would be working with my students. I love traveling from class to class and helping them in reading and math. My name is Jennifer Weber. I'm an ESE teacher at Coral Sunset Elementary. Ms. Weber has been an integral part of our community so with our students. She jumps in, she pulls groups, she makes certain that her students have what they need. If there's anything that's missing, she makes certain that she figures it out and she goes to the right person to try and find out what it is or how she can help. First number, then we keep going, five, six, seven, eight. I hope to instill a love of learning in my students, that they would pursue higher education and just be successful in life. Congratulations, Jennifer, there. All right, now coming up next, representing the Del Prado Elementary Panthers, let's make some noise for Kelly Urbano. Kelly! My job is not only to help students, but to also help teachers, and then also to explain the process of eligibility consideration or evaluations to parents as well. My name is Kelly Urbano. I'm the ESC coordinator at Del Prado Elementary School. We have students who receive special education services and also students who receive gifted services. So I have a continuum of roles helping generate interventions and goals for students with intellectual disabilities as well as gifted. Kelly is tirelessly, tirelessly devoted to what every student here at Del Prado needs and we are so proud of Kelly Urbano for this award. I just want people to feel comfortable. I want to put them at ease. I want them to feel comfortable knowing that I'm looking out for the best interest of their children and I'm going to gather the information so that they feel confident in the decisions they're making for their own children. Gotta get the picture. <laughs> These pictures are going to be worth money someday with Frank, so make sure you hold on to them and put them in a really nice frame. Congratulations, Kelly. Well, it's, a, it's fitting that, that as the CEO of the chamber that I get the next one, uh, the tie to IBM with Don Estridge High Tech Middle, and the teacher is Josh Bender. Come on up, Josh. One of the guys. Look up here. I love the fact that I can be myself. I can be a kid with them and deliver the information. I love our conversations. I love the way that they get it when I'm delivering the information. 
My name is Josh Bender. I teach at Don Astro High Tech Middle School, uh, eighth grade language arts. Meet the famous Lord of the Flies. I want them to love this subject. I want them to love reading. I want them to, to love to write. So if I can give them that, it'll go a long way. Writing and reading are a lost art, and I'm trying to instill that love of, of this uh, to these kids nowadays. Josh Bender is a unique teacher in that he takes the time to make sure every student counts. Josh doesn't let anybody or teach to the middle. He builds relationships with all of the students and therefore they thrive under his academic leadership. For me to prepare them and to show them the, the right way to make their lives easier in high school, that's something that I really, really enjoy. It, it shows me that, that they take pride in the work as much as I take pride in teaching. So. So during the reception, one of his former soccer players, who's now like this tall, was like, came up and thanked him and everything. And again, that just showed me the impact that all of you have on our kids when they're younger. So again, great job there, Josh. <clears throat> now, I was born in Philly, so this next one should be easy for me, but my wife's a Cowboys fan. But again, coming in from Eagles Landing Middle School, let's make some noise for Samantha Sider. Words, images, create a collage of what makes you one of a kind. My favorite part of this school day is, it's not one moment, it's a lot of moments. It's every time a new class walks into the classroom and they're just ready to learn. They're genuinely interested in what we're doing. My name is Samantha Sider. I teach sixth grade language arts at Eagles Landing Middle School. Knowing that they come back year after year to visit me and that they're able to say that they learned something in my classroom and that Mrs. Sider always had their back. Thoughtful to tell me like what you think he means or what you think is going to happen. She's kid friendly. Uh, she works diligently to make sure every student learns. She differentiates instruction to make it uh, learning accessible to all students. I taught elementary school for a really long time and I didn't know what I was missing until I came to middle school and then I realized that this is where I'm meant to be and this is home. Take a break. Congratulations, Samantha. You know, Jim, I, it seems to me like my teachers weren't this nice when I went to school. Like, my teachers seem mean. These teachers are awesome. Like, I kind of no, want to go back yeah. to school. Yeah. Well, it or maybe, was, it's, it was maybe it was the, my behavior. When we were in school, it was the dark ages. I mean, think <laughs> about it. This is That's the true. 38th yeah. annual. Yeah, good point. Some of these yeah. teachers weren't born when this started. I'm just saying. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me feel really good. Yeah. All right. Well, next up from another really cool, relaxing name of a school. You guys probably know who this is gonna be, but from Hammock Point Elementary, Sandra Vanegas. Sandra, come on up. Good morning, everyone. A few years ago, I got that interest. Being a mom, I'm coming from another country. I started having the feeling that uh, with my kids at school, it would be awesome to provide that experience that I had to provide it to those parents that are walking the road that I already took. And Sandra Vanegas is a school counselor at Hammer Point Elementary School. Look at her facial expressions. She has this keen ability just to ease their minds, help them adjust to a different culture here. She's just an all around wonderful person that's so easy to talk to. Many times people are able to show their feelings without even telling you. I enjoy every minute of our day. There is a lot a dual moment. Our staff at Hama Point, we always try to work together providing any support that we can give our students and their families. Now, now, Sandra, it was your son who used to play with Coach Josh there, right? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Tying it all together. It's a, it's a small community. Congratulations there. All right, from J.C. Mitchell Elementary, representing the Jaguars, let's hear it for Denise Ziegers. Who got 43 as their sum? Excellent job. I've always wanted a career that I could help people and make a difference, and I thought teaching is the best way to do that. 
Hi, my name is Denise Seegers and I teach first grade gifted high achieving at J.C. Mitchell Elementary School. You're ready. You're ready for the test. She just knows how to make learning fun. She has great ideas. She's extremely creative. I don't know where she gets some of the ideas from, but she has an idea. She makes it come to fruition and then she shares it with the team and it is just fabulous and the kids love it each and every day. What does that equal? Five. Is that what we're looking for? Yes. High five, good job. The best thing I like about teaching is the rewarding effects that I get from the children. Like when I see their growth, not only academic growth, but their social and emotional growth by the end of the year, it's rewarding in itself. Congratulations, Denise. Well done. All right, now from Loggers Run Middle, Clarence Crane. To see if I can construct a triangle. My favorite part of the school day is the one on one interactions with the students, which give me a first hand account of what they understand and what they do not understand. My name is Clarence Crane. I teach mathematics from Loggers One Middle School. Congratulations, guys, in case you didn't know, Mr. Crane is our teacher of the year for Loggers Run. Mr. Crane is a consummate educator. He works so hard and loves his curriculum. He's a math instructor here at Loggers Run. He believes that every child can learn the curriculum. Not only does he believe it, but he works so above and beyond to make sure that every child learns his curriculum. In addition, he's volunteered himself to be a mentor and role model to a lot of our young men on campus. The impact that I hope to have on my students is more than academics. One, um, the students and I sometimes we brainstorm about good work ethics and how it can help them in the long run. And two, I treat them always with respect and dignity. All right. Man out of my own heart there. I've got my tape measure out in my car right now, just in case, you never know. And congratulations there, Clarence. Now, our next teacher of the year uh, should be a little scared because I was talking to her amazing daughters, Julia and Gabriella, out there. But don't worry, none of the nicknames or whatever I'm going to use. So. From Olympic Heights High, Laura Kirkland. It has to be a universal overarching idea. I'm proud to be a teacher because it's a fun profession. I love working with the kids. I feel like we get to have an impact on them. I hope to create a safe space that they can come to. They know that I'm going to be strict, that I'm going to have rules, but we can laugh and we can have fun as well. I love watching them grow as people and as students, and it's just a really rewarding thing to be able to do every day. Hi, my name is Laura Curland, and I'm an English teacher here at Olympic Heights Community High School. So I am passionate about reading and writing. I love it and I enjoy it and I know that not all students feel that same way but my hope is that if I show them my enthusiasm and if I tell them what my reaction is to the different things that we've read that maybe it will get them involved. Writing is critical and I love teaching it to them and showing them that there are very real world applications for all the different types of writing that we do and they'll use it when they're grown-ups as well. It doesn't matter what level of students I give her, she works with them, provides support, and is able to help them rise up to meet all expectations. I really appreciate the recognition. I do what I do because I love it and because I love the students, but to know that it was recognized outside of the classroom, that somebody's noticing that I'm in here working hard every day, doing my absolute best, it's really a pretty cool feeling and I appreciate it. Now, I, I don't know if super Intended Burke noticed the Seminoles lanyard or not, just. <laughs> Congratulations, Laura. <laughs> well done, Laura. All right, next up from Omni Middle is Brett Swan. Another guy. So first we have federal courts. I love what I teach. It's really fulfilling to really get others to be their best, right, to perform their best every day. Mr. Swan not only focuses on standards-based instruction, he really works hard to motivate his students through engaging activities and building relationships. You step in his classroom and it is evident in everything that he does that he loves being a teacher and I love having him here at Omni. 
while I really enjoy being in the classroom, I really like those moments in the morning when I'm on my like morning duty and I get to see the kids in more of a natural environment. Uh, it's, it's a really good chance to get to know your kids and that can extend into the classroom to help you kind of build those relationships. I want my students to be able to leave my classroom to be compassionate, critical thinking human beings that are kind of ready to go into the real world uh, and not just be passengers. They're only going to succeed as high as you set that bar. Congratulations, Mr. Swan, from all of us here at Omni Middle School. All right, let's make some noise there for Brett. There's a book out there, All I Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And for this next teacher, she was telling me, I never want to leave kindergarten. So let's give it up, Sandpiper Shores Elementary, Amanda Kennedy. Why do you think it was a good prize? When I teach, I feel like I can get them to do anything. I can get them to learn. They are all their own individual little beings and everybody is capable of something. My name is Amanda Kennedy. I teach kindergarten at Sandpiper Shores. And why is that so important? What did the paraqueen reward? I have children who I've had over the years come to me 15, from 15 years ago and they still come and share their experience they had in my classroom and that is why I do what I do. She has been teaching kindergarten for 17 years here at Sandpiper Shores and when I think about Miss Kennedy, I think about that she's the type of teacher that every parent would want their child to have as a first experience in school. And every day I come to school knowing that they're gonna shine their brightest and they're gonna work their hardest for me. And that's why I do what I do. Here's the beautiful singing voice of the little frogs. One more time, ready? Cookie, cookie, cookie. Congratulations, Amanda. Hey, Jim, what's one of the reasons why people won't uh, go into the ocean when they go to the beach? Uh, maybe sharks? Bingo. Dun -dun. The sharks. Dun -dun. So the next teacher of the year from Spanish River High, sharks, Stephanie Cutrona. All right. Raise your hand again if you're born from September to December. Raise it high. When there's a moment and they're all focused and they're all learning, those are my favorite moments. When I can look back and be like, oh, okay, it was a good lesson. Because that, that doesn't always happen, you know, it's not perfect all the time. So in this case, it's someone who, who has a negative agenda. I hope to help them learn how to become deep, critical thinkers, how to analyze information, not just text, spoken word, conversations, and then take those skills for the rest of their lives. I'm so appreciative of everything that Ms. Catrona has done for the Spanish River High School students. Um, she also works with a lot of our staff to ensure that everyone is getting exactly what the students in her class are getting as well. So her reach is far beyond her classroom. Congratulations, Ms. Catrona. We're so excited for you and so happy to have you represent Shark Country. Fantastic job there, Stephanie. So, for our next winner here. Oh. Is Venus an inner planet? <laughs> Eager. Oh, we, I was ready to go with it, but. So, this, uh, her, her daughters, Nicole and Lexi, said something that I said might cause some arguments here because they said she is by far the best teacher out there. Sunrise Park Elementary, Michelle Jassim. Is Venus an inner planet? Good. Is, is Neptune an outer planet? Okay. For me, it's that aha moment when kids get the answers 
and they understand that feeling of, I finally got it because I never had that when I was a kid. My name is Michelle Drusiam. I teach fifth grade math and science at Sunrise Park Elementary. I think my biggest accomplishment is watching the kids go on to middle school and email me with their success stories and even after they graduate high school and go on to college that they come back and they tell me all the things they learned from me. Mrs. Juseum is somebody who is a champion for all students. She has high expectations and any student that comes into the room is going to learn and achieve under her. She is somebody who believes in relationships, making relationships all around this campus, not just in her classroom, but at recess, at lunch. You'll see Mr. Siem talking to her students in the hallways, making sure that she's pumping them up for the next lesson that's coming. Oh, that they remember me. That they say that their favorite teacher was Michelle Jusiam. Congratulations, Michelle. Uh, next up, from the beautiful Verdi K-8 school, is Tisha Thomas. Reflected, refracted, and absorbed. I love working with kids. I want to inspire them. I want to help them grow and learn and understand what makes them want to keep learning and dreaming. I'm Mrs. Tisha Thomas, and I teach science in the fine arts here at Verdi K-8. There are a few ways to do this. I love the energy and excitement. I love that we all have these experiences to share. We help each other, and then we work together and we grow. She is always excited about science. No matter when you see her in the hallway, in the classroom, she is always talking about science. She lives and breathe science and her kids know it and they feel it when they're with her. No matter what they choose, if they become a scientist or don't, they're still excited about learning and they, I want to impact them to keep growing and to keep chasing their dream of what they're going to become when they grow up. All right, congratulations, Ms. Thomas there. All right, our next teacher of the year has two sons, Dylan and Tyler, so be scared. From Water's Edge Elementary, Meredith Gaynor, AKA Mama G. Hey. <laughs> Definitely love to see like that click you know, something that sticks. I'll be reading, your overworked friend, red crayon. And I'll turn around and, and I'll ask them what's up and they, they said, oh, you just read something, it was figurative language. Hi, I'm Meredith Gaynor, a reading writing teacher at Waters Edge Elementary School. It's not just, you know, teacher student, it's relationships. It's uh, a bond that I believe starts in August and, and uh, it doesn't ever end. And I've been doing this for 28 years. It's definitely a, a relationship that I value and I think they value it too. They like to write, they like to read, so that's all that matters. Having fun, enjoying themselves, and feeling like a big family in here. Miss Gaynor is a fantastic teacher here at Water's Edge. Um, not only is she strong supporting our students academically, but she's also a leader on campus. When I told my students that you know that I was being recognized, they started clapping and beyond proud and, and uh, appreciative for sure. Mama G, that's pretty cool. Congratulations, Mama G. Well done. Hey Jim, what's the uh, astrology symbol for Taurus? What's the animal related to that? Taurus, is yeah, that Taurus. the bull? Bingo. All right. So you know who's up next? From West Boca Raton High School Bulls, Susan Hutchings. and that means it's in the center of gravity. It is so exciting launching this academy, bringing aviation to life for my students. We have the drone certifications, we have private pilot certifications, we have flight simulators, and it's just so exciting. 
Hi, I'm Susan Hutchings, Aviation Academy Program Director at West Boca Raton High School. I worked in the aviation industry for 15 years and decided to bring my experience to the classroom. The first person that's going to live on Mars is sitting in today's high school classroom. And that really encourages me and inspires me to push my students. Turn it on. Yep, all the way. And I am so excited that I can create this pathway for the next generation and pass the baton to them. This is an incredible individual who is now shaping the future of new promising pilots for our country. She is absolutely amazing and I just couldn't be more proud. I just love bringing the spark of the aviation curiosity to my students and once I see them catch that spark, I can open up a whole world to them. I was going to say, Troy, uh, we didn't have that in high school. And having a little background, I did a little internship at uh, Martin Marietta there. Uh, very exciting there, Susan. Congratulations. <clears throat> so, so what happens when we come to the end here, Troy? We're saving the best for last, right? Yeah, we, we call the last name and we cheer wicked loud for everybody at the wicked. end. Wicked. Everyone, and it's, it's can, big, big can everyone party. say wicked for me? Everyone, one, two, three. There we go. So let's give a wicked welcome from Whispering Pines Elementary, Sheila Guerrero. Five dash five. I love being a teacher. I love being with the kids. I wanted kids who don't fit a mold to have opportunities to branch out and be themselves and still be able to learn. I'm Shayla Guerrero, a fifth grade teacher at Whispering Pines Elementary School. So my love for teaching stemmed from and came from tutoring my brother in second grade. He struggled a lot with ADHD, couldn't sit still. So I remember me sitting down with him, helping him do his homework, teaching him math. So ever since then, I just knew my passion was working with kids and helping kids just love school. The kids will they'll work for her because they know about the fact that she's caring and understanding but she also knows how to get them to understand that we have a job to do and it's important that we do that job. I love that they love coming and that they love sharing your stories with me and that they can see the passion and drive that I have to be with them and to teach them every single day. Congratulations there, Shayla, and congratulations to all our teachers. Let's give them all one big round of applause. Congratulations. So, Jim, I th we're done. Are you going to kick us off and we get a little bit more of the program yes, to go? Yes, they, we... they have someone coming up now with a lot of class and poise and, and beauty, unlike us. No, that's not us. We better get that out right. of here. That's right. So, yeah. here we go. Let's turn Thanks it for over. Having us. Give it up for Jim Moore over here, please. And for Troy. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I opened up this evening by sharing that these teachers really know how to educate, affirm, and inspire our students. And I have to say, after seeing their videos, I feel very educated in what they do in their classrooms every day. I feel very inspired to turn, return to work tomorrow, Mr. Burke, and I certainly feel affirmed that we have the best of the best right here in the South Region. Let's give our teachers another round of applause. So in just a moment, I'll be inviting Tim to return to the stage for an important recognition in our program. Nearly four decades ago, Rotarian Frank Barbieri felt passionate about establishing an award ceremony that would recognize our teachers. And what was even before his lengthy service for nearly 16 years on the school board. Speaking on behalf of school district officials and school leaders, especially those schools being recognized here this evening, we will miss our legendary leader who is stepping down in November. Mr. Barbieri, thank you for all of your years of service for our entire district. And now I know that Tim has a lot more to share. Rachel, if I could have Mr. Barbieri and Miss Claudia Shea 
join me at the podium. So I know, Frank, you asked me to keep this short, which I will. Um, but beyond half of the, uh, beyond, behalf of the Rotary Club of Boca Raton Sunrise, we'd like to not only thank you for your many years of service to both the Rotary Club and to the educators of Palm Beach County, but also for the 38 years of being the genesis behind this magnificent event celebrating the wonderful teachers from our local Boca Raton schools. We'd like to present you with this Lifetime Achievement Award for your everlasting support and commitment to the education and children of Palm, educators and children of Palm Beach County and for future Teachers of the Year events. This will continue to be the Frank Barbieri Lifetime Achievement Award. So congratulations. So as you may or may not know, Ms. Claudia Shea is an Emmy Award-winning journalist with more than 20 years of TV news reporting and anchoring experience here in South Florida. She most recently was the Director of Communications for the School District of Palm Beach County. <laughs> All right. So she was most recently the Director of Communications for the School District of Palm Beach County and continually supported our Teacher of the Year event and served as our MC. Claudia, on behalf of our Rotary Club, we'd like to provide you with this award with heartfelt gratitude for your exceptional dedication and invaluable contributions to the Teacher of the Year Awards program. Congratulations, Claudia. There's a microphone, so you know I just can't walk off. So before I sit down, I'd like to thank Tim and the Rotary Club of Bogerton Sunrise and just the entire community. It was just a pleasure to be a part of this for so many years. But before I step off, we heard a lot of wonderful and well-deserved accolades from Mr. Barbieri this evening. And I think that we would all agree that he will be leaving behind enormous shoes to fill when he steps down from the board in November. So with keeping that in mind, I have a little something else for you. <laughs> this very tacky shoe, but it's, you know, large as I, says Frank Barbieri, number five for District Five. All right, congratulations. And Frank, I also have a personal gift for you. I know, right? It's just getting overwhelming, isn't it? I know. But this is from one Corvette owner to another. Okay? Thank you for the, I want to thank you for the opportunity to chair this event for the last, last several years. It's really been an amazing experience for me. So on behalf of me, on behalf of me, I give you this Corvette book, or this complete book of the Corvette, every model since 1953. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay, you sleep again. Now. now you're up. Now you're up. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, this was supposed to be about you all, and, and I wish they wouldn't have done all what they did because they told me that I, I was at the end and I didn't figure they were going to say all those nice things about me. But thank you. Um, I really wanted the focus to be on the 23 teachers in this, this room tonight. But, um, I, and I want to apologize. I got a little misty earlier. I realized that what I read you was the first time that I ever um, introduced the superintendent. And tonight was the last. So. so let me see if I can get through this. <laughs> I'm truly honored and humbled for this award. It, you know, it, I'm, I'm pr profoundly moved especially to know that it's gonna bear my name after I'm gone. Um, in November, um, you know, a new District 5 board member will be elected to take my seat. Um, reflecting on my journey, I'm certain that serving the kids, teachers, and schools have been <clears throat> the most rewarding endeavor of my life. Every decision made, every moment spent <clears throat> advocating for their needs stems from a belief in transformative power of education. 
So as I receive this award tonight, I embrace it not as a tribute to my personal achievements, but rather as a recognition of the strength found in collective efforts. To paraphrase an old cliche, it takes a village to educate a child. And speaking of collective effort in supporting our teachers in education, I know Tim has already thanked our sponsors, but I want to especially recognize the Wanda and Jim Moran Foundation. Wanda and Jim are friends of Rita's and mine, and although they could not be here tonight, they generously contributed $50,000 to this, to this evening's uh, event and have, have a pledge to continue funding this Teacher of the Year program every year from here on out for $50,000. So thank you to Jim and Wanda Moran. So there's a new Florida law that goes into effect in November. It sets term limits of eight years for school board members. I'm not, termin I'm not term limited by that new Florida law because it's not retroactive. Nope, I'm term limited by a much higher authority. <laughs> My beautiful wife Rita said, go ahead and run if you want to, but you'll be doing it as a divorced man living out of your truck. <laughs> so you can see I am term, 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 I'm term limited. On September 11th, 2024, Rita and I will celebrate 53 years of marriage. I'm, I'm sure she did not consider when she said I do all those many, many years ago that it, she was accepting a life sentence. Um, if she knew then what she knows now, she most probably would have poisoned me on our wedding day and she'd be out of jail by now. <laughs> by, the way, for the, for, by the way, for those of you who are looking at my wife Rita somewhere over there um, and counting 53 years, based on new math that you teachers understand, and I can't for the life of me figure out when I'm trying to help my granddaughter with her math homework, Rita is only 39. <laughs> I'm a very lucky man, and I want to thank Rita for the countless hours I have left her at home while attending meetings, spending time in the schools, and, and at so many worthwhile events like this one. Thank you, honey, for your patience and support. You have sustained me throughout my journey. Also tonight in the room is my daughter, Maria, uh, Maria is a graduate of Olympic Heights High School. Um, she went to FAU and she got her degree there and she got her master's, I'm mean, sorry, she went to UF and got her undergraduate degree, got her master's degree in speech pathology um, at FAU and she has her own clinic here in Boca Raton treating mostly children, a lot of autistic children. So I'm very proud of, of Maria. My two sons graduated from Spanish River and Olympic Heights also. There's been a sort of evolution of this program over the years. I started as chairman way back in the beginning. Then I was co-chairman, and now the Rotary Club has dubbed me Chairman Emeritus. If you Google that term, you'll find it means an old man with gray hair and a gray beard who just won't go away. <laughs> during the years that the Rotary Club, during the year, those years, the Rotary Club was fortunate to have gained the support of the, edu the district's education network. When we first started this program 38 years ago, and for many years thereafter, there was no video. I would just read a letter from each school principal indicating the virtues of the school teacher of, that, of the year. Then, I'd ask, then I asked my friend Claudia Shea, who was then director of communications for the district, if she would help us. And thanks to Claudia and the hard work of her staff at the Education Network, this program has been transformed into what I think you will agree is a Dwyer type awards event. Thank you, Claudia. I'm so thankful for your friendship and I'm so happy you were here tonight so that we could we could honor you. Last year, she was here, and after the event, when everybody left, she said, Frank, I just want you to know this was my last year. So we didn't get a chance to, uh, she, she copped out on me and didn't, uh, didn't tell me before it started. We would have certainly recognized her last year. Um, I will be forever grateful for your friendship during those very difficult times. Cla Claudia would often remind me that our meetings were being televised, and I should try to ensure nothing was said publicly that would run afoul of federal communications regulations, but it was tough because there were some very contentious matters and, and uh, when I navigated, let's say, confrontational audiences, I, I called them other things when, I'm, when I had my mask on and they couldn't read my lips. Um, <laughs> uh, she reminded me that the FCC would, would hear anything I said, so I remember one evening, it was a very challenging meeting and I publicly referred to the meeting as a show. Uh, <laughs> Claudia quickly texted me and said, well, that one raised my eyebrows. She said, maybe next time you should call it a dumpster fire. So I've learned my lesson. I haven't said show since that time and tonight, so. <laughs> the longevity of tonight's program is due to a whole lot of people other than me doing the heavy lifting. And as chairman emeritus, I get some of the glory. It's a nice arrangement. Sort of like the situation with you teachers and principals. Much of the, uh, you know, you, you do a great job. 
here in, in my district, and I have the benefit of bragging about it, as if it's, I did it, you know? So it's, it's really cool because I do, I do that at the city, Focus City Council meetings. I wanna thank the four city council people who are here tonight. By the way, the four city council people who are here tonight, um, Mayor Singer was not, not able to make it, but Blue Lake Elementary School is only here in the city of Boca because the city of Boca uh, Council decided to give us the land, the nine acres we needed. Uh, they donated that land to the school district so we were able to build Blue Lake. So thanks again to the city of Boca Raton. See, our, our Boca Raton schools are among the top performing in the entire county. Uh, you do all the work, I get the bragging rights, and, and I do that at school board meetings, and, and my colleagues on the school board are so sick of hearing about Boca Raton, but uh, I just keep rubbing it in, and I only have five, five more months to do that, so it's, it's not gonna stop. Um, during the past 38 years, several generations of students have passed through our schools. Isn't it amazing that as, as the generations change, one thing remains constant, the need for great teachers. As my late father once told me, education is the only gift you will ever receive that cannot be lost or stolen. He said, your teachers deserve your utmost respect for giving you this gift. Throughout my years of service on the school board, I have met countless outstanding educators who tirelessly dedicate their lives to our children. It is really very disheartening to acknowledge that dedicated teachers often go unnoticed and underappreciated. So I'm deeply gratified to play a modest role in honoring them this evening. Teachers, there are no words adequate to thank you enough, and there's no bank account large enough to pay you for dedicating your lives to our children. You hold the most critical role in shaping our future. Your dedication prepares our children to be ambassadors to a world we may never see. No profession has a greater impact on creating a better tomorrow than all of you. Tonight among us are doctors, lawyers, engineers, business owners, politicians, and various other professionals. Not one of them would have reached the pinnacle of the success they now have without the invaluable guidance of a teacher. In an ideally rational society, the highest esteem would be reserved for educators, recognizing that they shape the foundation upon which all other achievements are built. A very wise man once proclaimed that what a teacher writes on the blackboard of life can never be erased. So very true, and speaking of writing that can never be erased, tonight when I pre present, presented you with your award, I didn't give you an envelope that you'll get afterwards when you come up here to get your picture. Make sure you get the envelope with your name on it. There's several things in that envelope. There's the check for $200 to each one of our teachers from the Rotary Club. There's a letter from your principal outlining why you were chosen by the school to be here tonight. There's a letter from the mayor of Boca Raton thanking you for your dedication to the children in the greater Boca Raton area. And there's also a letter from Congressman Moskowitz. Congressman Moskowitz gave you one letter that's in there and the other letter that you'll find in the envelope is a letter to the uh, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. That letter asked the, asked the Congress to, uh, to put in the public records into the Library of Congress all, 30, all 23 of your names. And with that entry uh, in your names, your names will be ever part of the congressional record in the Library of Congress, etched into the permanent history of the United, <clears throat> of the United States. On behalf of the Rotary Club, <laughs> yes. There's a whole lot of Boca Raton teachers because every year I've been able to get the, the congressman. It was Congressman Deutsch before, but every year that the, the names of our teachers are entered into the Library of Congress. So if you ever get a chance to go up there, you can look up your name in the, in the records. They'll be there for as long as this country survives, which I hope is forever. Uh, on behalf of the Rotary Club of Boca Raton Sunrise, the entire school board of Palm Beach County, the parents, community members, and most importantly, the children who are empowered by you whose passions are ignited by you and whose dreams will be realized because you cared enough to dedicate your lives to their service, I sincerely, <clears throat> I sincerely thank you. As I prepare, prepare to bid farewell to my seat on the school board dais, I'm deeply grateful for the support of my colleagues, mentors, friends, and the incredible educators and students who have inspired me and continue to inspire me every single, every single day. In closing, let us continue to reach for the stars, knowing that even if we don't reach them, we leave behind a legacy of hope opportunity and endless possibilities. Thank you. As a reminder, all 23 teachers will be able to pick up your gift bag as you exit the theater. I would also like to extend a big thank you to the communications department and the education network, especially Amy Lippman, Dave McKinley, Rick Blackwell, and the entire staff for producing this event, as well as the staff at the studio. 
And last, but certainly not least, I would like to thank Claudia Shea for all she did in assisting me and preparing me for this evening. I now invite everyone to adjourn to the lounge area for coffee and delicious desserts created by West Boca High School Culinary Academy under the guidance of Chef Arnardo and the entertainment from Boca Raton High School Chamber Choir directed by Ms. Caitlin Wallace. And I would also like to thank our Spanish River Jazz Band led by Mr. Craig White for their entertainment before the awards ceremony. Thank you to our wonderful sponsors and to everyone for joining us this evening. As our awards comes to an end, we must ask that all teachers please come up here to have a photo with Mr. Barbieri and Superintendent Burke for a group photo and to collect your envelope with your check and letters. Thank you everyone for a wonderful evening.